In 2001, Metallica would be in some muddy waters after Jason Newstead made his departure from the band public. Meanwhile, Metallica had an ongoing lawsuit with Napster. They had just released the SNM double disc album, and now Newstead was leaving for good, saying, private and personal reasons and the physical damage I have done to myself over the years, as his reasons for leaving the band, even though he was playing the music that he loved. In our video here today, we're going to see how Jason would eventually become a scapegoat for Metallica, someone who had to leave for the better of their bandmates. Someone from the inside who put their finger on what was wrong so the process could begin. He fucking left the band. Which part of that is... <laughs> Some kind of monster followed the band from 2001 to 2003. And even though most of that was shown, there were still some moments that didn't make the final cut, mainly a private meeting that Jason had with the band at a hotel. The documentary wrapped us in its intense narrative, and for the first time, we saw metal legends being vulnerable human beings. If you haven't seen the documentary about Metallica called Some Kind of Monster, there's a link in the description below. As you might know, St. Anger was a little bit, well, different, and some of the stuff wasn't trash metal, maybe it had influences of sludge metal? What do you think? What styles can you hear on the record? From a lyrical standpoint, it felt personal, but it was still really heavy and raw. The mentality was just so evidently different. Metallica was a dysfunctional band by 2001, and Jason would inevitably throw down the gauntlet on everybody. A much-needed decision 15 years in the making. But the bottom line is, he shocked the band with this move. Before we dive into the nitty-gritty, I want to invite all you metalheads old or new to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let's rock on to the topic. At first, Jason was part of the local metal scene in Arizona with Flotsam and Jetsam playing gigs in bars, earning a whopping $7 per gig, and writing lyrics. Jason Newstead often saw himself as a dictator conducting band rehearsals and meetings. Jason was serious, and they eventually got a record deal with Metal Blade Records in 1986. Speaking about his early days, Newstead said this, I was doing all the correspondence and tape trading, and as soon as we had the demo available, I was on that. We were feeling good about ourselves and I was really motivated. While Doomsday the Receiver was being produced, Metallica was busy touring Europe with Master of Puppets. Unfortunately, however, during their tour, they were involved in a bus accident, causing the immediate death of Cliff Burton. Cliff Burton was only 24 years old in September of 86. Obviously, the band was still grieving his death by the time anyone was auditioning for the spot. So, Jason Newstead flew from Phoenix to San Francisco and arrived at 7.30 in the morning. He was the last to play in the auditions for Metallica. He said, They're still fucking self-medicating, grief-stricken, running from this process that they know they have to be forced into. So already the ground is shaky. I've been awake for two days because I've been thinking about this moment. To keep the long story short, on November 8th, Shortly after the bus accident in September of the same year, Jason would be playing his first show with Metallica on the Damage Inc. tour at the Country Club in Reseda, California. His studio debut would be a year later when the $5.98 EP Garage Days Re-Revisited was released in 1987. He was credited as Master J New Kid. After being in Metallica for 11 days, the band pulled the first of many pranks to come. It all started with the Wasabi prank, to knocking on his door at 4 o'clock in the morning at a New York hotel, devastating the room, flipping the mattress with him in it, and throwing his stuff all over the place amongst many other things. And as you might know, it escalated into the studio as well. Many people have uploaded remixes of And Justice For All, with an actual audible bass, which is nice. But the band said they were honoring the legacy of Cliff Burton when they decided to mute the bass from this album. According to James Hetfield, this attitude towards Newstead never really ended. We took a lot of our resentment, a lot of our grief, and a lot of our despair around Cliff's death out on Jason. Right from the beginning, there was a lot of hazing that just separated him, and he was always thought of as the new guy. 
I wish that didn't have to happen. I guess we wanted to toughen him up. We wanted him to be as tough as us. We were brutal with him. And it never ended, really. Something that wasn't in the documentary, Some Kind of Monster, was the nine-and-a-half-hour band meeting at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in San Francisco that Jason held with his bandmates. Prior to quitting, just two months earlier, Playboy magazine conducted an interview with Metallica, and they said that the genuine tension was evident in these interviews, the last ever to be conducted with this Metallica lineup, because they all shared one trait. Each member talked about his need for solitude. Jason contributed largely to the band. I mean, no one is forgetting Jason Newstead, hot under the collar delivering the vocals for Damage Inc. or for whom the bell tolled. His energy was just unmatched. But when he found out that the band had wiped out the bass from And Justice For All, Jason said, I was fucking livid. Are you kidding me? I was ready to go for throat, man. No, I was out of my head because I really thought I did well, and I thought I played how I was supposed to play. Even though Newstead was angry and within reason, he doesn't seem to be the type to hold grudges. He said he likes the legacy of that album. I think it was brilliant that they didn't even realize how fucking brilliant they were in their drunk stupor to do what they did. Jason co-wrote the songs Blackened, My Friend of Misery, and Where the Wild Things Are. So, what happened during that meeting? It's hard to say what happened at the Ritz Hotel, but in the documentary Some Kind of Monster, there would be a short clip where Jason is seen talking to the band, essentially telling the band they should take a year off. If you don't remember, Metallica had released the I Disappear single and the s and album around that time. Also, they were in the middle of a legal battle against Napster. Jason said he would use that time to focus on Echo Brain. The disapproval from the band, especially from James, was the last straw. James Hetfield and Metallica's management knew about Echo Brain and wanted to promote it. However, when James Hetfield refused to promote Echo Brain, Q Prime then withdrew their support. Two months after Jason Newstead left, Lars said this, The ironic thing is that the model for what would have been the perfect Metallica in Jason's mind is the one that exists now. Jason is a good guy and he put a lot of effort into the band for many years. And in retrospect, he was never really fully accepted into the band. Then, when he tried to go elsewhere to satisfy his creative needs, he was told, well, barked at, that he couldn't. And years later, in a 2021 interview with Apple Music, Lars also said, If you think about it, Jason is the only member of Metallica who's ever left willingly, and that in itself is a statistic. And the resentment from James and me was just so... We felt like you can't do that. You can only leave if we want you to leave. And then we weren't equipped at the time to do a deep dive into why he was leaving. And so, of course, now that you can see it 20 years later, it makes complete sense. Do you remember that therapist from Some Kind of Monster? Well, Phil Towell spoke about Jason's character. He said, Jason had the courage to stand up. He was the one who set in motion the process of calling everyone out. Jason's last concert took place on November 30th of the year 2000 at the My VH1 Music Awards and officially announced his departure in January of 2001. We hope you liked today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe with notifications if you haven't already so you don't miss any updates. Stay metal, my friends.